Thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to do is to react to my old version of my Udemy Flutterweb course. And it's uh, there's a lot of people who think that my course is fast and I'm agreeing to that because yeah, I was like rushing through and such and I didn't know better. So now I'm just going to face my, I guess six months ago, me who's trying to create a course. And then you could see now that you will see my face. All right, so let's go. And this selects all of the words after this to front slash and let's replace it with an empty space click on it anyway this is not front slash excuse me old harris this is a backslash and now it looks so much better great let's run our first flutter web project in our chrome make sure you have chrome over here oh one more thing make sure you have I like when I say, oh, one more thing, because it's not scripted and I kind of forget sometimes when I, I'm recording a course and that's pretty normal when I was doing this. Continue. We have web folder over here with the index HTML. So for the default debug mode, it is F5. All right. So now we have for the default debug mode, it is F5. All right. So I guess like people were commenting about how fast it is. I can see that uh, it's a little bit fast because when we are coding our projects, we are expecting the same kind of pace to what the video is supposed to. So for example, if I were to run the app, I should, you know, show the app loading. So the person will also have the time that it will load the app. And then after that, you cut to this. I think this is pretty fast, but that's fine. Let's move on. Our Flutter demo home page, which is inside our Chrome. Let's resize it so we can push it over here to see all the changes. What I usually like to do is I like to place it like this and close our side window. All right, so let's test it out. Let's change Flutter demo home page to Flutter home page and see whether it refreshes. Nice. So I think that a little bit out of context, but Flutter web has really grown a lot because 4,000 milliseconds, which is four seconds, which is, I mean, in terms of like Flutter development is pretty long. Um, but now if you were to, you know, refresh a uh, UI change, right? Or reload the UI change, it will take like 200 milliseconds, which is amazing. So kudos to you, while. Flutter team. It's not as fast as the actual Flutter on a mobile simulator, but it's pretty good. If we look back to our design, we have a couple of things that we need to do. So we have to have an image network, a text, a flat button, a text URL, and whatsoever. I think this is a little bit confusing if you were to see this whole layout which is I don't know that's that's me because I guess like what I've learned so far is that people cannot focus on a lot of things so like for example one thing that I still don't do is that my mouse cursor is not very obvious it's very very small so what a lot of people do is they have that hovering thingy I don't know how to do it but I'll probably do it uh, when um yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably do it in the future course that I'm building right now. So, yep, let's continue. So let's start with an image. Let's delete the whole home page over here and create a stateless widget. So you can type in STL for sh that's pretty fast. Oh my God. So another thing that I improved on or another thing I should have done here is that I should, you know, put in the different uh, text or key text that I've, you know, used on my keyboard. For example, right, to select everything, what you can do is you press command or control and then press shift and then down arrow key to select everything from the top to the bottom or basically you're highlighting everything right so i think a lot of people are like oh my god harris why you delete so fast that kind of thing right that's where i put in like you know those black box that says what are the different keyboard combination and then what's its purpose right so for example if i were to type in command shift down arrow that means I'm selecting or highlighting the whole text from the original cursor position to the last line of the code. And then, the, yeah, that's about it. Uh. So, <laughs> shortcut <laughs> and have our stateless widget. And let's name it the links landing page. And you copy and you paste it over here. Delete this. All right, maybe we can center. Another thing that I didn't say in this part is that once I deleted the whole brackets with the params, right? I didn't add in back the brackets. So yup, if I was the student, I'm like, dude, slow down, baby. All right, so let's continue. But this is actually an error. This means that our material widget is not being initialized. Therefore, we need to make our parent widget as a 
I think I've never tell the reason why the hello word looks like this. The reason is because you did not put the material theme passed down through the links landing page or through the widget. So you either create a material widget or you create a scaffold widget because both of these widgets has its own material theme or theme data basically. Or you can just wrap it with a theme data widget as well. So I think that's where I learned after this, like I experiment on this. Widget. And if yeah. we save it, and you can see it's pretty small. So if we look back, we need our parent widget to be a column. So let's delete our... Oh my god, that was so fast and it was not like... If I want to go back, right? So like I was saying, oh, you should have a column. And then I was just like, you know, hovering through this like red box. But I don't see the word column. So it's a little bit confusing. It's a lot of text and I did not really refer to what exactly I'm trying to do. I will say column, but... If I were to like that amount of time to really see what's the column you I'm referring to, it's a little bit wonky. I don't really understand. Okay, now I understand why people don't. <laughs> I mean, I do understand why people can't understand what I'm trying to say, which is Look fine. Back, parents. I'm always trying to improve. That's the whole point. And this is my own profile picture. If you see. So I think I've never really explained on how to get your image into a URL, which I think I explained it in my new version of my Flutter web with Firebase course. It was something that I felt really guilty about when I released my Flutter web with Firebase course because I knew that, not say enjoy it, but like people didn't really understand or are able to catch up with it. So that's why I recreated the whole course to make it like slower and really explain like, even for a column widget, right? I will explain like, what's a column widget? So it's a layout widget where you lay out your widgets right inside the column widget in the position from top to bottom. So the first widget will be always at the top and then consecutively the widgets will be stacked to the bottom. That, that kind of explanation, even though you think, oh, people understand it, I think it's more towards like, it gives beginners and even like people with like experience at least some sort of like explanation that really helps them to understand. Because sometimes people understand in their own words, but they are not able to, you know, explain it in layman's terms. So like, for me, I really like the challenge of, you know, trying to explain this kind of like simple concepts that you might think it's simple, but to the layman's is able to, you know, understand. So yeah. David, it will appear very large. What we need to do is we need to... At the same time, I didn't really explain why my image was large. So my image is actually large in this like URL. So if your image is small, right, then it will be a small thing. If I'm not wrong, yeah, I should have explained it why it's big, right? So me fall. And then at the same time, I've never explained to you how to make your image into a circle. I think I've explained in my new version of the course. Yeah. So if you see closely, right, material is not exactly white. So you see at this bottom part of this Flutter web app, right? Then at this part over here, you see the surrounding color is actually white. And this is like quite grayish kind of thing. This is actually square image, but I've already like cropped it to become a circle. You could see that it's a square image. So it's like optical illusion kind of thing. How is so genius. Now let's look back to our design. I think there is some spacing on top. So let's, it. my God. So at the same time, I guess I feel that anything that seems obvious for me, I should make it very obvious to the students as well. Even for like, you know, size box or any like widgets that use for any sizing right I should you know put it at the slides as well so at least people understand or could contextualize what I'm trying to say if you really really want to be <laughs> a good I guess teacher you explain literally everything you know because you can't assume that the students know what you think or the students know everything so you should always assume that a student don't know anything and then you could see the Q&A or the section where they comment, right? They probably will ask. But most of the time, students don't know what they don't know. We should put out there what the different, you know, widgets or code means, you know. And maybe you don't have to put in the video tutorial. You can edit inside like uh, its own page or, or something like that. So that's why. So let's move on. Let's insert a simple text widget like this and save it. All right. So it looks, for me, I think I would rather just put there's always like this conflict with me, right? When I'm trying to, you know, put in code. So some people will just copy and paste, which is fine. Some people will type down 
So for me, I think what feels very natural to someone who's trying to learn coding is to type down. At the same time, you can like talk about stuff, you know. That's why I feel that even though copy and pasting code, right, is something that's very convenient and it looks clean, right? I feel that it does not give you a real life expectation of what coding is. I mean, yes, coding is copy and pasting. Yes, that is definitely true. But at the same time, you also have to type down code. And sometimes you have to type down code from scratch so you don't have a lot of copy and pasting, right? I guess to give the most authentic kind of experience as a developer would be typing down code, right? Other than like, you know, copy and pasting URLs, which I think is definitely something I would not recommend to type down from scratch. But in terms of coding, like you will know how autocompletes work or how suggestions menu work. That is when typing down code will really open up the experience of development so let's wrap with a padding and let's have a padding of 12 let's save it all right so it looks so much yeah so i like i said earlier and many times i really didn't explain why i use padding like you can definitely use a sized box so i guess why i use padding over here is because i'm lazy to put a sized box right above the padding widget and below the padding widget because I have other widgets at the bottom as well, right? If it means all, that means my left and right of the widget also have padding, which is pretty redundant. What I'll do is I will use this thing called symmetric, but I think I didn't know symmetric back then or I'm just lazy. So you symmetric and then I will use a vertical. So vertical represents uh, top and bottom. So that will be like a much more like cleaner, less redundant code. So I guess there's a lot of things definitely still need to improve on, right? I guess I'm uh, learning and improving as well. So I guess in my new Flutter web uh, Udemy course, right? I have like tried to explain as much as I can because if it's too much explaining, people will get bored. So at the same time, I want to have a nice balance of, you know, application or typing code and also learning something. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing because this is a three hour plus kind of like a tutorial. I have a version two, which is links in the description and I have a discount code for you guys because I, I mean, I feel really bad <laughs> for, for like people who have already bought my course and they have a bad experience, right? So I guess like revamping the whole course and now they have a new version and hopefully they go through it. So I guess in summary, I would say that I think I really have improved in terms of like, you know, teaching and explaining concepts and even like simple things that like, for example, age insets dot all. What does age insets means, right? It's just spacing. It's just an object that you create to create space inside a padding widget right but other than that like i think i have i think i think i have uh you know improved in terms of like explaining and my pacing has slowed down dramatically because i thought that having fast paced kind of videos inspired by fileship.io was something that I, I feel that when I was going through tutorials, right, I always have the 1.5 or 2 times speed and then I'm able to, you know, really go through. But I feel that I actually enjoy learning at a one speed, you know, because if the video is like 5 minutes, then I'm okay doing one speed because like it's worth the 5 minutes rather than having a, like a 30 minutes. Then I'm like, okay, I probably need to speed it up because time is of the essence that kind of thing and at the same time i have like visual cues that shows the different keyboard shortcuts that i use like for example command shift and then whatever arrow keys so i can highlight the whole line or the whole code below the original cursor so the flutterware firebase course i think is something that if you are a developer with experience and you want to learn flutter web and you want to create your own you know flutter web uh, website application then flutter web is for you so that's about it. And before I end this video, I want to, you know, say that I have two projects that I'm building. So the first one is learnflutterCode.com. So it is a platform for anyone, a developer to learn Flutter. And then that's where I'm going to move, right? So I think I created a video about why moving Udemy to Teachable. I'm using Teachable to, you know, host my future courses. Secondly, I'm building this Learn Flutter app. So it's a simple Flutter app for developers to learn Flutter or basically challenge the knowledge of the Flutter developers, right? So like, for example, what are the different ways of creating a circle and that kind of thing. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. So it's still a work in progress. If you guys are interested, I have the link in the description to sign up and that's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this uh, reacting to courses, if you want this kind of thing, 
uh, hit me up of other courses I should react to. Maybe Angela use uh, courses, right? And that's about it. Stay safe and all the best. Remember, wear a mask. Bye-bye.